you know, I can't wait to be in love again and find that special someone to spend the rest of my life with. But I said, you know what? Love isn't enough. So what is greater than love? I'm on a journey to discover, uncover, and recover love. Now, as a national playwright, I've penned dozens of shows about relationships. As a filmmaker, I've documented the most beautiful committal of lovers at weddings. And as a divorcee, I know firsthand the brevity of marriage and the pain of its loss. I'm the Terrace R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, the Terrace R. Whitfield. Today, I'm just going to talk to you, talk to you about something that I discovered along this journey to finding my future wifey. Doing this podcast, a lot of things happen before I record uh, throughout the week. And so today I'm just going to give you an update on my life before I get into the subject matter of today's episode. Today's episode has been recorded on Tuesday, July the 28th. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because I was supposed to be meeting a childhood friend today, um, reuniting with him. He's been in prison for the last 11 years. And then the last year he was out on parole serving um, uh, he was on house arrest. And so he and I have been in touch with each other throughout the year talking and, um, you know, making sure he stays on the right path. And last week, he called me up and he was like, man, um, I'm supposed to be meeting with the, the parole board or probation board. I don't know what it was. But basically, he was going to be free. He no longer had to report and all that stuff. And he said, man, I got to see you, man. I've been so excited about everything that you've been doing. I've been watching you on Facebook. And I, I need you to mentor me. I said, man, definitely, man. Like this is my, this is my, this is my childhood homie, David Gwynn. And earlier today, I got a call from my sister, the same person that reconnected us last last September. And she called me and said, Did you hear the news? David died last night in a motorcycle accident. And yeah, we were supposed to be, he's supposed to be coming to my studio today. Starting the process of mentoring him and making sure he stays on the right path. And yeah, so along this journey, I know I'll experience heartbreak and, you know, losing loved ones. And it's interesting because when my sister called me, I was thinking, what happened? He died from COVID. And I mean, he was just like a motorcycle accident, like a motorcycle accident the day before we were supposed to hook up and meet. So yeah, I definitely wanted to share that with you guys. I'll be remiss if I didn't just honor him. He, he told me this story last week. He said, man, he said, man, I was about to go, go to blows with this one dude when I was in prison. Because you popped up on the television screen. He said you were doing something. He said you was on the news about something. And the dude, he said, I saw it. And I was like, man, that's my, I'm going to quote him exactly what he said. He was like, man, that's my nigga right there. You know what I'm saying? That's my, that's my nigga. I grew up with him. That's my boy, the Terrace. And uh, we didn't call me the Terrace. He called me Terry. So my family and friends growing up called me Terry. Man, that's my nigga, Terry. And uh, they was like, man, you don't know that. You don't know that nigga. You don't know that nigga. He's like, man, I do, man. That's my boy. So he's about to turn the TV. He's like, man, we're going to go to blows if you turn that TV, man. I got to watch my boy. And so he was telling me that last week. He was like, man, I was about to go to blows with this dude about turning the TV. He said, man, I can't wait to see you. And before he got off the phone, he said, I love you. I said, I love you too, man. I can't wait to see you next week. Which lets me know how um, fragile life is. Yeah, so how fragile life is. So today um, I had a lunch meeting. I just came home after that lunch and just laid in the bed and went to sleep. Last week I started this 
I was going to call this episode, What is Love? And I was going to break down the eight types of love. Yes, there's eight types of love. And I said, you know, love is so powerful. Love is a great thing. But in the midst of doing the research to talk to you guys about what is love, I began to think about my own personal journey. And I said, you know what? There's something greater than love. So I'm going to ask you, what is greater than love? Than love. When you think about love, those that of us that have those of us that have been married and those of us that have been in relationships, quite sure everybody that's listening to this has been in a relationship, other than my my son over there, Armani, who's recording this. He hasn't experienced heartbreak yet. Uh, looking forward to him experiencing that once in his life. I think that matures you and grows you up a lot. But You've ended relationships, broken up with people, and you say, I love you, or I will always love you, or I'll always have love for you. So if love is the greatest thing, why doesn't love keep a relationship flourishing or keep a relationship going? So I began to think about that. I kept saying, you know what, you know, I can't wait to be in love again and find that special someone to spend the rest of my life with. But I said, you know what? Love isn't enough. So what is greater than love is today's topic of discussion. What is that? What have you come up with? What is greater than love? In my journey, I've come to realize the answer to that question for me. Now, it may not be the same answer for you, but what I believe is greater than love is trust. Let's unpack that. Trust is greater than love. I'll, t- I'll share this story with you real briefly. Um, when my son Armani came to live with me, he would always text me in the middle of the day and say, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? And I used to say, man, you're annoying me. Why do you keep asking me what's for dinner? And he said, I said, you know, I'm going to take care of you. Why do you act like you're not going to have any food? While he told me he loved me a whole lot. And he's never shy of saying, Dad, I love you. I love you. But what I realized that needed to be built with him was trust. Armani having gone through um, seasons of homelessness and not having food. He said, you know, I'm not so sure that you're going to always have food for me. He said, so that was a luxury for me. So I don't trust that you'll have food. Has there ever been a moment where you went hungry living with me? He said, but it takes a while for me to, to get to that point of, you know, basically unlearning that that trauma that he went through. And that's what happens to us in relationships. You can love somebody, um, but you may not trust them. I always say that you can have love without trust, but you can't have trust without love. It's impossible. And that's why I believe trust is greater than love. Let's talk about this. So even in the wedding vows, and the vows that we say on those at that beautiful During our nuptials, and they say, for better or worse, through sickness and health, for richer or poor, to death do us part. Is that love? It's not love. That's trust. I trust that you will be there through my sickness and when I'm healthy. I trust that you'll be there through the financial storms that we have. I trust that you'll cover me, that you'll be faithful to me. I trust. It's not love. And, and you know when that's really tested, where women just really don't understand it, is that when a male steps out on you and cheats on you, and he tells you, but I love you. And you go, how in the world do you love me if you cheat on me and you went and had sex with some other woman? How in the world, how dare you say that you love me? And in his mind, he's trying to reconcile, but I, I really do. I really do love you. And what is broken in that is trust. But he still loves you. He loves you. And you can't understand why love didn't make him be faithful. 
And then you say, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you just tell me that you had these weaknesses? And why didn't you tell me that you were seeing her? Why didn't you tell me that your ex-girlfriend popped back up in the picture? Because he didn't trust that if he told you that, that you'll be able to handle it and be able to protect him in the process and not lash out at him. We all want to know that the person that we're giving our heart to and sharing our time with, that we trust that they're going to be um, responsible enough to protect us and cover us. And how dare us go into relationships, especially marriage, not trusting that person with our whole self. It's a tragedy. It's a setup for failure to say, I want this marriage to work, but I'm not, I'm going to have my money over here and, and they can keep their money over there. Think about that. And yeah, I do. I do believe that you should have um, an understanding about finances and having money separated on, you know, however you see fit for your family, but it can't be based on the foundation of a lack of trust because you don't trust that they're going to uh, provide a great fiduciary duty over the, the household finances. And you're like, no, nah, I don't trust them with that. We're going to mess around and be homeless. That can't be, that can't be the, the, the issue there. You have to get married and trust. I have to get married. And when I say I do to that special someone, I have to go giving them my whole heart and my whole mind. Trust isn't an emotion. Love is an emotion. Trust is psychological, is mental. It's something that's proven over a period of time. So hopefully, hopefully during your dating courtship or in your engagement or before you walk down that aisle, you've built up enough trust to really say I do to that person. Because if you haven't built up that trust, don't don't waste don't don't waste your time, don't waste their time. Take your time and find out why you don't trust them. Because marriage is to be taken seriously. And the Bible says that we become one flesh. In order to become one flesh, you have to trust that person that they have your best interest at heart. So let's look up the definition of trust. Trust is defined as a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. When I sat in this chair, I trust that it could hold my weight. What do I weigh about? Two, two, 205. I trust when I sat in this chair that it was going to cover me. It was going to hold me up. When I get in my car, I trust that when I put the key in the ignition and I crank it, it's going to start up. Now, I had some cars in the past that I didn't quite trust that uh, so easily. I had some little raggedy cars that you try to crank it up. It may start. It may not. And so I would never trust that, that car, I would never trust that car to go on a road trip because it's not reliable. We are building relationships with people that we don't trust to go the full distance with. If you're seeing someone that you know you can't go the full distance with, that you can't go on the full journey of life, that you can't go on the full destination of life with, stop wasting their time. Be honest, transparent, keep it lit and say, you know what, you good temporarily, but um, I can't see you for the long haul. So if you want to stick around and just have fun temporarily, for this season, then, then that's great. But I really don't see you for the long haul. And give that person the opportunity to make an informed decision whether or not they want to stay there, or shoot you to deuce, and go on about their business. I really believe in being transparent with people. Let's look at the story between Samson and Delilah. In the Bible, it says that Delilah wanted to know where the strength of Samson came from. Where did it derive? It says, Delilah was a woman of Surak. She is the only woman in Samson's story who is named. The Bible says that Samson loved her, Judges 16, 4, but not that she loved him. The two were not married, and the idea that they had a sexual relationship is, in the words of Josie Bridges Snyder, at most implicit in the biblical text. 
The lords of the Philistines bribed her to discover the source of Samson's great strength, each offering to give her 1,100 silver coins three times she fell. Now, first, at his own suggestion, she bound him with seven green wits, but these he easily snapped asunder. Then she tied him with new ropes. These also fell. Then she fastened the locks of his hair to the loom, but with the same result. Finally, after many complaints that Samson did not trust her, he told her that his strength lay in his hair. Then when he was asleep, she ordered a servant to cut Samson's hair. She then awoke him and delivered him into the hands of the awaiting Philistine chiefs. Trust. Now this is, when I hear this story about Samson and Delilah, is. You know, I sometimes want to get mad at Samson for being that naive, but I found myself naive in trusting people that didn't deem or show themselves to be trustworthy after many um, failed attempts, as the Bible says. Many failed attempts, we find ourselves dealing with people that when you try to trust them, they keep failing, and they keep failing you and keep failing you where that person isn't trustworthy. Then you might ask, well, why in the world would Samson then give her the secret sauce to his strength? In the Bible, it says that Samson found a safe place to lay his head. Now, last week, we discussed the Jezebel spirit. So clearly, Delilah was operating in the Jezebel spirit because she manipulated Samson with her narcissistic tendencies and led him to believe that she in fact was a safe place when actually it was a setup for his failure. But trust, that's how powerful trust is. Trust is literally giving of yourself in totality. Trust is being able to believe that that person is going to cover you emotionally mentally, spiritually, and physically. Trust is being able to believe that if you shared with that person any type of issues that you have with that person, that your words, your um, heart is going to fall on a safe place. And that's why trust, to me, is greater than love. Let's talk about this type of trust. In the noun sense, a trust is a three-party fiduciary relationship in which the first party, the truster or settler, transfers or settles a property, often but not necessarily a sum of money, upon the second party, the trustee, for the benefit of the third party, the beneficiary. Hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, what happened? That's because a trust was formed. God, the father, is the first party. He's the truster or the settler. And he transferred Jesus Christ, being the sacrificial lamb. That was his investment. That was his sum of money. And he was the second party, the trustee, for the benefit of the third party. That's you and me. We are the beneficiaries of that trust being built. Going on this journey to find my future wifey, I'm learning a lot. You know, talking to different people, I'm glad that I had Jay on the podcast to discuss what it looks like to heal as a man. I've been going through my journey. I love when I had Lauren, who's 30, and just talking to her and seeing how you know, intelligent and wise she was, it challenged my, my personal bias to be even open to dating a woman uh, younger than me. I say I would date somebody, you know, probably about, I had about a little four-year gap, but I prefer women that were older. But it, it challenged me. It made me say, you know what? I think I will be open to dating somebody um, a little younger than four years. <sighs> four years by junior. Uh, 
talking to Raquel about preference versus purpose, challenging my ideology about what's most important to me. I see beautiful women all the time. I'm in the entertainment industry, so I see beautiful women all the time. But what's most important to me? Is it the beauty or is it the purpose? Is it somebody that's able to undergird the vision that God has given me and help me carry it out? It's about purpose for me. Talking to Lenny Williams and his wife showed me what lasting love looked like. And to know that both of them had been married before, and this is their second marriage. And it showed me that the second time around can really be the last time around. The Jezebel spirit with Narisha, whew, that right there really spoke to me because it taught me, you know, I've had my experience with that spirit in the past. And now I have a high level of discernment and for me not to even entertain that spirit. Don't even try to think that you can rescue that spirit. But run, 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 Forrest, run. Run from it. So that was a very impactful episode. So yeah, I know my mind may be all over the place today, but you're getting it straight, raw, and lit. Say a prayer for the family of David Gwynn. He has two sons that will be growing up fatherless. So that really, um, it really hurts. Hope you enjoyed this. God bless. Here's the place in the episode where I manifest my future wifey. Dear future wifey, I used to think that love was the greatest thing needed in order to build a lasting relationship that withstands the test of time. Looking back over my life, I've come to understand the most powerful need isn't love, but trust. You see, trust is mental. Trust is psychological. Trust is building a database of experiences and knowing no matter what arises, you and I are solid, unbreakable, covered. Baby, I welcome the opportunity for you to build trust with me. I will build trust with you. Through our bond, love, and loyalty, our family will become the beneficiary to our trust. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.